You know, I used to think of patients as, you know, guests in my hospital, and now I realize I'm a guest in their lives. Do you think you can teach medical students to be empathetic? Is that something that is intrinsic, or is that something that can be a taught skill? Um, yeah, you, you lecture at them, and then you give them a multiple choice test. Isn't that how we teach medical students? That's exactly things? right, yeah. Um, it doesn't teach empathy, though. <coughs> It's not a fair question, right? I mean, that it's mm -hmm. uh, e medical students and house staff, and in fact, junior faculty and people before that, they do a lot of modeling, mm -hmm. and so there is a, there's a bit of a tautology here, That's right? But point. we probably need our doctors, whom they are emulating, to show them these basic skills, not teach them. And mm -hmm. the question is, where do these doctors come from? If we're growing up a generation that lack them, but I don't want to overgeneralize. You know, this is a big part of being a good physician educator, and we clearly identify some doctors as critical in playing that role, and I don't have a better answer than that, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can't teach it in a lecture course, but I, mm -hmm. I had a few experiences in my life before, before I was married, and then when my wife was sick, that brought some notions up that I paid attention to, and I think that most people would mm -hmm. who sort of confronted it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the story I told you, just literally thinking I'd had a conversation with somebody who didn't understand a word I said, mm -hmm. and finding that interaction to be satisfying by my own perspective really woke mm -hmm. me up. Mm -hmm. This is why I think like we're a little bit too cautious with patients, we're a little bit too confident that they don't want information that they actually do. They've, they've carried their entire life to that moment where they're with us and we have this bad news that they don't know. And then suddenly we're the experts in how they should figure out what the next step of their life is, having met them for a few seconds and sometimes not even realizing they don't speak English. And, the, you know, that it's, it's, not, it's not because of paternalism, it's because we don't Nobody wants to be in that situation. We're like, hi, nice to meet you. You have a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. But that's actually our job. Mm -hmm. And it's a little naive to think that people walk in and we can size them up and mm -hmm. figure out how to give them that information. And what do you do as a provider, if you can put that hat back on for a second, when the patient and the partner may not be in the same place? I guess your job is the patient, right? But well, yeah, I mean, you certainly don't want to get in the middle of it. Well, uh, but yeah, I think that your job is is to like dealing with the person who brings their whole life history and their whole version of owning their own life and trajectory with them. The couple, the family, they bring all of that with them. Mm -hmm. And you can try and mediate, but I actually think, I don't want to use the word interesting because it sounds so dispassionate, but. I've always found interpersonal interactions within families around crises very interesting. Yeah, no, and so many things you see and you're like, I know what you were like as a five-year-old, you know, sort of. And that's not an insult. You can yeah. just see the yeah. inter-sibling dynamics and things. And, you know, being in the ICU and talking to people by end of life and DNR, you see a lot of this stuff come out. And I've always felt like the best route, and I was always taken as, I don't, I can't manage these. I don't understand this well enough. I don't know anyone here. But I know that my job is to convey the truth mm -hmm. as best as I understand it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have perfect knowledge. But, and there's a lot going on, but I don't assist it by trying to add another level of opacity. So, yeah, I think the job is to sort of just advance the actual facts. Mm -hmm into whatever is going on in terms of interpersonal mm -hmm. dynamics. And yeah, absolutely, the patient carries the day mm -hmm. in all those interactions. Uh, I spend a lot of time, even now, talking to family members and people who are ill because by dint of friendships and relationships, sure. I find myself in those conversations a lot. Right. Uh, and also because I've been pretty open about what the experience is like as a caregiver, uh, people reach out to me. And it's, uh, there's a lot of layers of people trying to protect one another. Mm -hmm. And that's normal and to be expected and part of what my experience was as well.
and I don't see a role for the provider being adding yet another layer of buffer to that because we actually can't be that helpful in that sense. Yeah. Well, um, thanks very much for reading my stuff and thanks for inviting me to talk about it. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. This has been great. And thank you for joining us.